Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Tonight I'm going to show you how I painted a uh, spray of flowers on this candle. This is a wax candle, a real candle, not one that's uh, one of the fake ones that you put a battery in. It's a real candle. Alright, so I've kind of uh, just wiped this off and we'll go ahead and start painting on it. Now, you can do one of two things. You can either just paint on them as as they are, or if you feel like it, you might want to put maybe some Mod Podge or something down on it first just to help adhere the paint. You can do that as well. Once you paint on them, it varies from one candle to the next as far as how well it adheres. I just wouldn't recommend a whole lot of handling because that could disrupt the actual design. So I'm going to be using a number 12 flat brush, my fine line Westonia brush, and I'm going to be throwing in just a few filler flowers using my number 6 Royal Aqualon Filbert brush. Alright, paints I'm going to be using tonight are Real Brown. All these are folk art products. Majority of them are multi-surface, some are enamels. White Pearl, Happy Green, Midnight, Yellow Ochre, that's an enamel, Yellow Moon, oh actually I'm not using Yellow Moon, let's take that one off. Thicket and warm white. Now I am just going to start by doing a basic pattern. Not very hard. These are five petal flowers. Not very difficult at all. And I'm just making sure that I get them loaded really well. It's been a while since I've actually painted on a candle, so bear with me here. I think they're pretty easy to paint on though. I've done a lot of painting on, especially the battery operated ones, because I'm not a big fan of burning real candles. And I like the ambiance of a candle. I find the battery operated ones work really nicely. But just see how, how easy the paint flows onto the candle. Right. And again, I'm just going to keep layering and going around the candle. Where we end up, we shall find out as we go. Also, keep in mind too, I am a left-handed person. You may have to start your design the opposite direction. So please keep that in mind when you're watching me paint. My designs will often be created in the opposite direction that you would if you're right-handed. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about that, please let me know down below. If you're a right-handed person and you're comfortable doing it the direction I'm doing it, that's fine as well. Just so you know that it's perfectly okay to switch directions and start basically I start a lot of times from the right side of the design you might need to start from the left side of the design and go from there but you just keep building now you can go clear around the candle or just do a design strictly on what you would consider the front of the candle both of them are perfectly acceptable Again, it's just a real simple stroke. You're going to be up on your chisel edge, you're going to push it down, come around, and you're done. And then just keep turning it. And then you're done. And I'm just layering it. You can do partial, you can do whole. And I'm layering it so that they're kind of going to be bunched up on top of each other, which gives it a, a neat look too. Alright, 
So I'm just going to keep going with this. Take a few minutes. Complete my, my design. I'm probably on this one for the purpose of the video. Sorry, I keep floating off the screen here. I'm going to be doing just the front of it so that my video doesn't last 12 hours. I like to try to keep them relatively, I want to say short, but kind of short. Now that one, yep. Okay. You just kind of stand back and say, hey, where do I need to add something? Where do I need to make an adjustment? Just very easy design. I do try to stay in the simple side of things just so that what I'm showing you can be done by anybody. Can give you some design ideas if you're someone that's a more experienced painter. And then you can add to it, put your own twist to it if you want. That's where we would be so far. I think that's kind of a pretty spray right in front. I might come down a little bit here. And just keep turning, keep turning. I thought this was a pretty color combination too since the candle itself is kind of a dark tan or not really a uh, not really a white at all. And I've been wanting to to paint on a candle for quite some time and I keep forgetting when I'm trying to come up with ideas on surfaces to paint on for you guys. I keep forgetting about the candles. You see how nicely it just allows you to overlap. I think it just very nice flow. Very nice flow. And very pretty. I might go ahead and do another one just on the top part here. Let me know what you think so far down in the comments below. And I'm not trying to make it even as far as like how far one side comes down as opposed to the other. Not even trying to do that at all. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is switch over to my greens and start putting in some of the leaves. Now if you wanted to, you could actually easily leave some space in between these as you're painting them. You don't have to have them be so on top of each other. However, that's what I wanted it to do. And Hold on for just one second. I wanted it to be layered, so that was intentional on my end. It's definitely not something you have to do. I got too much water in my brush after rinsing it out. Alright, so on this leaf, I'm just doing, I'm going up, kind of coming up, and then just spreading it down and lifting. And then I can come back here and kind of smooth it out and do that. And then do the same. And 
that's probably where going back and forth on your plate probably helps some, but I, like I said, I don't really follow those rules really, really well. And you can do a variety of, of types of leaves. Doesn't have to be all the same. Gives it more interest if you break it up some. And kind of add some different ones to it. And now I'm so this candle's kind of heavy, so I'm kind of afraid I'm gonna drop it. And I'm trying to keep it underneath here where you can see what I'm doing. I think I almost like painting on candles as much as I do glassware. It just flows very nicely. Some some areas or some paint surfaces you now you don't like the painting on paper can be dry. Now see this one I'm doing one side will have a dark side, one side will have a light side. Here we go. We'll just keep it going. On this side I can do and I can actually do it where I have it the opposite. Where I have the dark side on one side, on the left side, and then I have the light side on the right side. And I'm going to come over here and just pull my stem through there. See how pretty that is? I mean so far and you can hit this with, I don't want to say a heat gun, you know, maybe lightly, because you don't want to melt your candle if you're trying to dry it some before you paint over the other colors. You just have to be careful that you don't do, do too, too hot, too long, because you're going to melt it. And I'm certain with that, you're not going to want to melt it. And I'm wondering, did I just, I did. See, this is the problem I have when I'm doing this kind of thing. I keep sticking my fingers in it. And I'm sure there are ways to avoid that. I'm just not doing it. I'm going to probably do it on this side now. Okay, let me fix this over here. Whoops brush color upside down. Like that. Alright, I'm trying to make sure I don't keep doing that. But so far, I think it's pretty. And what I was meaning when I said that is that I kind of might want to put a little bit of leaving in the middle leaving, if that sounds right, and I'm going to probably pull some blue with it, I'm sure, and let's do it like that, back up, I'm going to do one of those, let me start it, start it differently here, up. that out a little bit and then just act like it's kind of coming through here. Got some leaves going on in there. Can turn it upside down if I want to to paint. I know I'm getting, like I said, I'm not the neatest painter in the world because I do have a tendency to stick my fingers in it. But I can do my little one stroke leaves. Put a few of those in here and there. Those are kind of my filler leaves. Um, we can add to this part here. And then 
and just keep building off of this like it's coming and if you want to you want to pay attention to whether you've got the light or the dark up or down if you don't really care then don't worry about it too much I mean it's fine either way I know I think I stuck my fingers in something over here now but you get the gist of it yeah, that's tough. It looks pretty healthy. And now I have one of these items, this product that I could actually be not even touching this right now. I don't know why I don't use it. Who knows? I think it's a challenge, a challenge for me to keep my fingers out of my work. And you could go around just connect it because we're not too far from each other on the back sides here if you wanted to do that. That's why I like things with stems on them. They're much easier for me to paint. So it's kind of like do, do this kind of but not necessarily exactly the way I'm doing it because I keep smudging it. I just painted that daggone thing. So that's where you need to learn how to handle things without painting on top of them and then sticking your fingers in them. Okay, so we're going to go like that, like that, and I can clean that off. That's not a biggie. All right. So you might want to try just to keep your fingers out of them <laughs> as much as possible. I don't know. I don't want to tell you. All right. So this is where I say you can go ahead and maybe hit it with a, some heat to kind of dry it so you can continue working on it. Because I think it would be pretty to put some, and I can tilt it a little bit here too. Maybe I won't make as big of a mess. A little hair in here. Sorry guys, like I said, I'm, I try my hardest and I get kind of crazy with stuff at times. And then just, and there's ways to, and at some point I'll have to show you ways to make it look like your leaves are kind of uh, you know, they're not just straight, they're kind of folding and, and have some movement to them. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is work on the centers of the flowers that I painted. Typically I would maybe just put a dot in the center and call it a day, but I thought on this I wanted to use my, my lovely little fine liner brush, that's for fingernails, and do the brush just putting, putting the centers in. Mm -hmm. this brush oh, I like it I love this brush actually because I can get such wispy whisk wisp wispy wispy yes wispy kind of designs stroke work out of it as opposed to just a regular liner brush Sometimes those are kind of hard for me to control. And I'm, I apologize for the background noise. That is my, my air conditioning running. I always like to try to mention that because I know it's loud. This is where I have to do my video so I don't have much of a choice. Alright, so I'm going to keep doing this. Giving these guys a little center. And you could do a different center. I mean, that is perfectly fine if you don't want to work with, you know, trying to do this little spray in the center. The dot will work just as well. I think I hit the blue, hit the blue, hit the blue, hit the blue. And it's just fine. the blue. 
more of the blue, more of the blue. I'm going to just keep doing it. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. Like I said, I'm trying not to mess the design up anymore. But we're not finished, so there's still more to do. I'm just doing some crazy little strokes here. Let's see, we'll just keep turning them. I'm going to, like this one is just barely showing, but I'm still going to put some as if it's, you know, I can see part of the center. Still, still, still. Keep doing it. Just keep doing it. And you can thin out the paint too if you feel the need to. It's not flowing enough for you to get the thin, wispy uh, design, brush strokes. And you can thin it out. I just want to make sure I got the, oops, I did miss one up here at the top. And I'm going to just keep doing it. I guess, and I apologize if you can't see this part very well. Probably not missing a whole lot, but all right. So then I did that. Okay. Like I said, you could put more more leaves. You could leave more space in between your flowers if you wanted to do so. But then I think it's nice to go in, and this is one area too where you might have considered um, hitting the dryer or the heat gun on your on your candle because then I'm just going to come in here and just do these real quick little four petal flowers and just put some in sporadically throughout the design again these are little filler flowers and that's exactly what they're meant to do. They're just meant to be little filler flowers, nothing spectacular, nothing challenging. Just kind of fill up, fill in your design a little bit. And you can go over them if you feel that they're too transparent. As I know if you're like me, I like things to be opaque in my designs. If you don't like the filler flowers, by all means, leave them out. You don't have to have them in your design, obviously. Uh, it's up to you. For this one, I'm using the filbert brush. I'm just going to put a few on here, just quick little strokes. I got some green in it, so I wanted to get that out of there. That's why I say, you know, I could have maybe hit it with a heat gun to get that out of the equation as far as the paint mixing. But I don't mind the paint mixing in this one. Just depends on what I'm painting, if, it, if it's a problem or not. If you don't like that kind of a look, then by all means make sure, if you don't want to hit it with a heat gun, that you at least give it some drying time. And I would say with this paint, give it at least an hour if not a little bit longer. Okay, we have that. And I'm just going to keep adding some of these in. Again, they're just quick little, you just kind of hit them, pull it, pull it. If you need to go over it, by all means go over it. You don't have to have like a cluster, you can have a single one. It just whatever floats your boat. And I, I just can't stress that enough. Even when I do do art stuff with my grandkids, you know, honestly, I had a doctor recently ask me, well, can she do blah, 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 you know, like tracing something, and I'm looking at them like, I don't know. I never have them. I'm not a big one to have them color 
or do that kind of thing because I watch my grandkids, I like for them to have a blank piece of paper and just let them do what they need to do on it. And then I'm not saying it's bad to color because I, I get the coordination part of it and so on, but I just never really, I never pay any attention to that because I want them to be creative. Okay, let's go over here and throw some of these in. So that's how I roll, but I'm not saying that's wrong or right. It's just how I think. See, I am pulling in some of these other colors. which kind of gives it a neat look, but then on the flip side of it is, is if you don't want that look, let it dry or go over it until you get the look you're, you want, or you're trying to achieve. Alright, so I'm just going to do a few more of these. I like these quick little fast flowers. Yeah, you can just kind of set them in there sporadically. Like I said, you, if you like clusters of so much, you know, make them clusters of threes, clusters of two, you know, whatever, whatever it, it does. You know, we all have our idiosyncrasies, I do believe, that make us like a certain number. I'm going to take, I'm also going to throw this in here, one of my, the clay ball or my dot, dotting tool, however you want to reference it, and I'm going to use it to dab in in the middle of these, just to dab in a brown, a brown center. This is a simple brown center. Nothing more than that. stand out. It looks cute. And with this too, if you wanted to coat it, you could possibly, you know, coat it with one of the Mod Podges uh, just to give it some added safety. Make sure though, if you're going to burn these, that I believe some people just put tea lights, burn them down a little bit and put tea lights on them. But anyways, here we go. Nice and done. Very easy project. Quick, simple strokes. Not too bad for me sticking my fingers on it every five minutes. If you are new to my channel, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell. That will alert you whenever I post something new. If you like this video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Hit the share button underneath the video and share it with your friends and family on your social network. I appreciate your taking time to visit my channel. Hope you like this video and until the next one, you have a good one. See you then.